Hey everybody, Dave here. Hope you're having an awesome day. So today I want to talk about failure. Um, I do a lot of builds and sometimes in the moment you're like, this is awesome. This turned out great. And then maybe a few months, a few weeks, whatever, you look at it and you're like, oh, something's not quite right with that and you want to fix it, touch it up. Well, this is actually a build that I did back in December of 2018. And I've had him on my kind of collector toy shelf uh, down in the basement. I have uh, four really nice glass shelves and I kind of keep all my, my prized possessions there. And the reason this is there is because it was one of my first builds and um, it was kind of a, a new exploration for me of taking trash. This is actually two hairspray lids. Uh, I actually built this before I was even doing my YouTube channel. I hadn't quite uh, figured out all the filming and stuff yet. So, um, but yeah, it's a cool little kit bash of Gundams and trash and uh I think there's a carburetor part here. I'll do a close-up of this in a minute. But I've had it on my toy shelf, and it's never been quite right. And so a few years back, I built a base for it. I thought maybe it needed, like, a base. And it's been sitting in my shelf. And the other day, I was getting some stuff and kind of moving stuff around, cleaning. And I was like, this thing, what is wrong with this thing? It's just not quite right. And I think I figured it out. I think it's the arms. The arms are a little wimpy. And again, I'll do some close-ups of this, but my background is uh, I'm, I'm an illustrator. I got my undergraduate in illustration. And when you're drawing, anybody that's done any drawing, when you're drawing a picture, your eye will correct mistakes for you. And that's where somebody will come walking in and they'll be like, oh, that's pretty cool, but like the left eye is really big. And you're like, what? Or it's crooked and you're like, what? And you don't see it. But if you turn the picture upside down, a lot of times you can see that mistake right away because it's a new perspective. And again, this has been in my shelf. I haven't really paid a lot of attention to it, but I was walking by and I was looking at it and all of a sudden, I, I was like, I think the arms are too small on this thing and the proportions are weird. And I think I want to fix it. So come on, let's try and fix this thing. <laughs> Okay, so before we get started, I wanted to just do a turnaround shot of this thing so you could get an idea of the proportions before, and then we'll have a comparison at the very end. And something funny is I took this out, took some photographs of it way back when, and did this little illustration, and it's just hanging in my office, so I thought that was kind of funny. There's something kind of cool about these textures and patina that I did six years ago. And to be honest, I don't really even remember how I was doing it. There's definitely some splatters on there. I think some of it, the paint actually just chipped off of the plastic container and I just painted over the top of it and it gives that really nice weathered chipping. So um, I like that. The arm system, I really didn't even remember how this all went together, but that's a Gundam peg system. And I think if I remember correctly, I just put the entire body up in there and used the peg system and the glue, nothing was really holding. I was using just some cheap super glue and uh, since I've switched to uh, BSI CA glue. So one of my first things I am thinking is I just want to extend the length of this. So I'm going to take some polystyrene and the polystyrene is a little large for this peg. The hole there doesn't quite fit. It's pretty loose. So I was digging around in my polystyrene bin and I was like, oh, I've got this smaller tube and they kind of nestle right inside of each other. So if I glue that into the larger one, that should fit a little bit nicer. I'm gonna drill this hole out just so the polystyrene can kind of pressure fit up inside there. I'll probably glue that in as well. But So I've cut a small piece, kind of just measuring out. And I think even just that little tiny extension is gonna give me the length that I need for this arm. All right, so I'll start assembling this, put some glue, put that cut piece of styrene on there, slide that extra part on from the original build. And then I found this Gundam little model kit. I think it was like a three inch Gundam. Probably found it at Barnes and Noble on clearance last year or something, but I feel like the bottom of this leg will act as a really nice bicep. 
it'll hide that piece of polystyrene and kind of bulk out that top part. So I'm just kind of dry fitting everything right now just to see, does it look cool? Is it proportionally correct? And I think this is really going to work. Um, I need to drill out some of the holes. I did get a new Ryobi tool here. Uh, it's a lot smaller than my Dremel that I normally use. So um, I'll, I'll keep you posted on this one. I, so far, I really like this tool quite a bit. Got that all dremeled out. The styrene fits really nice. So I'm going to go back and kind of re-dry fit everything now that I can actually close it up. And at this point, you know, you're kind of working through things and you're like, wow, this is actually working. This is looking pretty cool. Love the proportions. It's really beefing everything out. So I'm pretty happy with how things are going. Nothing's going to cause problems, right? <laughs> uh, there's some little nubs there. So I'm going to go ahead and sand those off. And once I sand those, um, I'm going to snip off this little part here. I think something clipped onto it. I left that other nub on the end because I was thinking maybe I'll put some wire on it, but uh, we'll see what happens there. I'm going to dry fit this again. And you can see now that I've sanded those parts flush, that should glue really nicely together. All right, so now I'm going to do some sanding where that nub was. And then I'll do a little wet sanding. And at this point, I'm kind of looking at it and I'm thinking, oh, I don't know how this is actually going to go together because that Gundam stub for the arm doesn't come out very far. And then I've got a flare on that thing. So I thought maybe if I trim this and offset it, I can get the peg a little bit closer, which it did get closer, but um, I'm still not sure how this is going to actually work. After looking at it, I was thinking I'll probably need to tr cut all this part out just so I can open it up. So I went ahead and took my snips and just started kind of carefully hacking away at it. Um, I did score a little line with an X-Acto blade just so it could cut a little bit easier. Then I took the Dremel and I Dremeled down a little half circle notch because when I put that piece on and then I put the peg post in, I kind of needed an opening for the hole to fit into the post. Okay, so that's feels like it's working pretty nice. And then when I tried to do a dry fit, I was like, oh man, this is not working because the bicep flares out too. And these posts are just too small. So I super glued this whole thing together. So I had to crack it and break it apart. And it is kind of interesting to see how I put this thing together way back when. I actually used four chopsticks to help support the thing so it didn't flop around left and right. And I put the entire body of the Gundam in there. So, um, yeah, so now I got to try and figure out how to break this out. And after about 10 minutes of messing with it, I was able to pull apart and those posts are way longer. So I'm thinking if I can remount this little hole, I love that tool, by the way, um, maybe I can push that post out a little bit further and it feels kind of like it's working, but the arm is so floppy and nothing's glued together. So I need to put this thing together just so I can kind of see what I'm working with here. Okay, so before I start gluing this all together, I just want to do a quick comparison. That's the original arm. And here it is extended and then bulked out. And I'm a lot happier with this. I keep looking at the back side of the bicep and there's this hole. And I'm thinking, I need something to cover that up as well. So again, before I glue everything together, I just want to make sure I got all the right pieces that fit. This is like the shin off of another Gundam kit that I had. And again, I find these Gundam kits at yard sales. Uh, one of these I found for 50 cents. Another one was like a dollar. So um, they're half built, but these pieces are great. And I just lucked out. Sometimes parts just fit right into place. And so um, that fit really nice. I'm going ahead and putting some glue on here, kind of sandwiching this together. And then once I got that, I'll glue the bicep to the forearm there. And that fits really nice and flush. And I thought, oh, since I'm just dealing with model to model, I'll just use my Tamiya. That did not work at all. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my CA glue and glue that on. Now that fills out that hole really nice and it gives a really nice kind of tricep feel. While the glue is drying, I went ahead and cut a little piece of polystyrene because originally these two pieces just kind of butted up against each other and they didn't really fit that great. And so it never glued really well. 
So what I'm going to do is almost build like a little belt or a welded seam that would be maybe on a like a propane container or something like that. And so I think that's going to work out really nice. I'm going back and forth on this arm. I don't like that gap there. And so I kind of, I'm not happy with it. And this is my build. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and rip this back out and try something else. Now I've used magnets quite a bit in the past. Um, and so what I'm doing is using my reaming tool and I sanded down a little flat area, glued a magnet into there. And the reason I sanded that out is so it would flush out a little bit against the body. And you can see here when I click that on, uh, look at how tight that is. And it looks really nice. So I think I found the solution for the arms finally. Way back when I glued this headlight on there, and I don't know why. I think it looks really dumb. So I went ahead and just popped that off. And then I'm thinking maybe I'm going to do an LED in here. I love using these tea lights. And so... That looks pretty cool. So I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do that. Now, I'm not gonna do an entire video of this because I have a video how I do my tea lights. So I'll leave a link below. You can check that out. But I did find this little helping hand at a yard sale for five bucks. If you don't have something like this, these things are awesome. Okay, so I was gonna do like a little wire to fill that gap up at the top because there's a giant hole there. And it is kind of ugly. And I know once I paint it, it's not going to it's not gonna look that great. So I went through my little bits. I went through actually like three bits boxes. I'm just kind of showing you a couple little here. And nothing's really working to fill that. So I think I'm going to use some Magic Sculpt. It's just a two-part epoxy. You do like a one-to-one -one ratio, mash them together. And then the you have a maybe 30 minutes to an hour of workable clay. And then it hardens. I'm going to just do some sculpting here and what I'm really just trying to do is blend the magic sculpt into the original Gundam part. Now you can see on the bicep there I had a little bit extra I made like a screw and it filled that top part really nice and once it dried and I painted it green everything blends in really nice. At the top here there's a little cage and there was like a little component in there and it, I thought it'd be kind of cool to paint this like a little dab of red so it looks like a red light glowing so I think that's a fun little effect. And then there was a little bit of light coming through where some of the paint had chipped off. So I'm just taking this darker green and kind of blobbing it on. Then I'll take this Kiwi Brown shoe polish and start doing a little bit of wash. I always approach it a little bit more carefully in the beginning, but then I just kind of start going at it. Put it on, take a paper towel, take it off. This gives such a really nice effect. I got the Vallejo wash here. I love this Vallejo rust. It's nice. It gives like a, it dries a little bit chalky like rust. And to be honest, this as a maker <laughs> for me is one of the most satisfying and amazing parts to be putting rust on and pulling streaks and it really transforms your build super quick. So um, up at the top here, there was a lot of weathering and rusting already, but again, just adding that a little, that little additional touch um, is just really bringing this thing back to life. Where the belt was, I did actually spray paint it green again. So I did lose some of my original wash. So I'm going ahead and kind of blending that all back in. All right, so jumping over to the arm because it was custom built, brand new. Had to repaint it and then I started weathering it and I need to get it all blended in. Now this, I may have kind of hurt myself on this. No, I don't think I did. I think it worked out in the end, but I added a little bit of black chipping and I'm just taking a paintbrush and just carefully putting it on. I know some people say, oh, you could use like a paint pen or something. There's something about the brush and the way the tip of it presses down, lifts up. It gives you some nice variation in your lines. So once I started this, I'm like, man, this looks really cool. But now I have to do this arm. Oh, and the two legs. Oh, <laughs> and the entire robot. So that's what I was saying earlier. I might have uh, hurt myself, but... Ah, it's just more work. Um, but as I started doing it, I'm like, man, this looks really cool. It's something that's subtle. So if you were to look at the before and after, you may not even notice it. But if you once you start really examining it, it's like, wow, look at all the weathering on the left leg and then versus that leg. It's like, wow, that looks so much better. 
Um, man, so much work, but totally worth it. Um, I'm dremeling out a little spot for my tea light and I actually ended up kind of putting this little thing in and I tried super gluing it, but that wasn't working that great. So I ended up carefully doing a bunch of hot glue, got that thing all glued in and it works still. So that's great. Turn it on. That looks awesome. I can turn it off. Um, the base itself, the rocks were a little too brown, like everything was brown, so I touched those up. And yeah, I think I'm gonna assemble this thing, put it back together, and we'll call this one done. That was fun. Okay, so that was really fun to go back and revisit a six-year-old build. It was actually built December 20th, um, six years ago was when I posted that first video. And it's interesting to see <laughs> how my brain thought back then and how I think now about builds. Um, I don't think I was using CA glue back then. So a lot of the parts, they just popped off. A lot of my weathering techniques are totally different. And a lot of this is just through trial and error. And that's one of the reasons I started this channel was I wanted to encourage people to just try and make something. And if you fail, that's okay. Cause you can learn from that and you can grow. And so, uh, yeah, just, seeing it on my toy shelf and walking by it. I've really loved this piece for a long time, but those arms, the little T-Rex arms, they just weren't quite right. And uh, so I'm glad I took the time to go back and rebuild this thing. And you know, again, the reason I made this channel is just so I can encourage people. And six years ago, I didn't really know what this channel would become. And you know, uh, in your mind, you're like, this thing is just going to blow up and it'll be amazing. And, you know, it's, it's grown. I, I'm super thankful for all of my fans. There are so many wonderful people that watch this channel uh, every other week, leave amazing comments. Um, there's a couple that have left some pretty mean, not mean, just like bizarre comments. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe I'll do another video of that someday because they're pretty funny. But as a whole, I'm so thankful for my audience and for the maker crowd who... Um, just understands and appreciates what we're doing. I know this is a really niche market. And so, uh, yeah, I'm a graphic designer by trade and to get to use these things on a, you know, on a build, how awesome is that? I mean, so go make something awesome and hope you have a great, uh, holiday season, Christmas, New Year's, all that great stuff. And yeah, until the next build. Uh, let's do a couple turnaround shots of this thing. I'm going to do a before so you can see the shorter arms and then we'll do an after and uh, I hope you enjoy it. As always, it's a great day to be a toy nerd. Have a great one.